That's why, do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. I've been to plenty of ditty parties. I left early. I swear to you, I've never seen the stuff that they, they claim. I never, I've never seen any of this. Hold up. Did Marlon Wayans also get didified at them freak out parties? Y'all better grab a chair for this mess because all of this mess with Diddy just opened up a whole new can of worms about the industry. And the latest in the list of names is none other than Marlon Wayans. Word on the street is Diddy tried to get Marlon into a decade long freak off contract so he could be his personal boy toy in exchange for some industry favors. People were not surprised by this because this is the same exact man who was cross-dressing as a white woman some years ago, but they were still disappointed that he allowed Diddy to do him like that. Apparently, Diddy turned him out at them freak-offs, and that's why he's now a huge ally for the LGBTQ plus community. People believe that Marlon is just hiding behind his son's sexuality because he allows him to live out his DL lifestyle, just hiding through the boy vicariously. Child, let's get right into this, because there's a lot to unpack here. Now, when it comes to Marlon, there have been a lot of questions around his sexuality for a long time, with some people even accusing him of possibly swinging the other way from time to time. These rumors actually started back in 2004, when he cross-dressed as a woman to star in the movie White Chicks. Now, even though the movie was a hit, people were turned off by the fact that he even agreed to do this and emasculate himself as a black man by pretending to be a white woman. The backlash even got worse when people found out that he and his brother were behind the entire storyline of the movie. This this was also around the time that every black man on TV was being forced to dress as a woman in at least one movie in order to become a Hollywood star, so people felt like he was selling his soul. These allegations only got worse after Dave Chappelle had his famous interview with Oprah, where he spilled all the tea about how he got blackballed from the industry and had to reject a $50 million contract because he refused to dress up as a woman on SNL. At some point, Dave was actually scared that they'd come after his life. Life. So he dropped everything and flew to South Africa to lay low for a while. While he was gone, the media was working overtime to ruin his reputation and label him as a mentally unstable freak. Upon his arrival back to America, he made it very clear that he was not mentally unstable. But the media was just not letting up on him and kept pushing this wild narrative. I'm not crazy. I'm not smoking crazy. I'm definitely stressed out. There were things that overwhelmed me, but not in the way people are saying. Interestingly enough, this happened to Dave just in 2005, which was just a year after Marlon's movie White Chicks came out. Things got so out of control that Dave ended up appearing in an interview with Oprah to clear his name, and that's when he spilled the tea about what happened. When he was asked why he rejected that $50 million contract, Dave said there was some shady things that came with it that made him uncomfortable. But instead of Oprah trying to hear his side, she kept interrupting him and forcing him to admit to having some form of mental illness that he ain't even have. It was completely outside of my frame of reference. I've been in show business since I was 14, and uh, I've heard the stories mm -hmm. of what happens, and I've seen these kinds of things play out in front of me. Okay. When, I saw when you say you heard the stories, what do you mean? What stories? I mean, you see before, look, Mariah Carey made a $100 million deal and three months later, she's all of a sudden mysteriously crazy. Or Martin Lawrence punches through and he's waving the on the street screaming, they're trying to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hear those stories. And it always happens around the time of their career where it seems as though they're crossing over the next plateau. Yeah, yeah. Would you say you lost your mind, sort of? No. No. Not exactly. OK. Uh, I wasn't crazy, but it, it's incredible. Incredibly stressful. Yeah. And uh, I feel like in a, in a lot of instances, I was deliberately being put through stress. He also recalled the time where they tried to force him into wearing a dress in a movie. However, once he made it clear to them that he was not wearing that dress, they came back later with an entire script that didn't require him to wear it. With certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down like, why all these brothers got to wear a dress? This happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. And I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene 
where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a... <laughs> and he put this dress on, and it, huh, Martin? Nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. That, that should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We're supposed to shoot. Every every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He said, I'm, nah, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? You know, we're going like this. And then finally, he's like, ah, and he, he leaves. And then, like, the director comes, Dave, it really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this? Uh, broke back dress? I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh, oh, gosh, this guy's so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes, come on, Dave, it would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. All the comics that I've seen, man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress, I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine, think of something else. That comes back 10 minutes later, the whole new scene, how, damn, how did you write the scene so fast? Now, even though what happened to Dave had nothing to do with Marlon, Dave's experience definitely contributed to people accusing Marlon of selling his soul and possibly being DL. The DL allegations got even worse after he came out in support of his son who's in the LGBTQ plus community. Him supporting his trans son Kai is supposed to be a good thing. However, people could not help but wonder if the reason he was supporting Kai so much was because Kai was living the life that he wanted to when he was younger, but couldn't get to because of the raging transphobia at the time. I guess people are saying since he cosplayed as another gender in the movie before, and the movie became one of his most popular, so maybe he low-key wanted to be a woman, but since he couldn't live out his truth, he decided to channel that energy into going hard for Kai. The allegations got even worse when rumors started going around that Marlon may have even been diddled by Diddy a few times. Times. These allegations started after an interview he did with Shannon Sharp a few weeks ago started going viral. And in this interview, Marlon admitted to being a regular attendee at Diddy's parties. But just like everybody else, he swore up and down he left early and had no idea what was going on. Can I ask you about this? Because people be asking me about it. These Hollywood parties. Marlon, you been to the Hollywood parties. What's going on at these Hollywood parties? I left early. <laughs> <laughs> Because people people think that I've been to plenty of Diddy parties. I left early. I swear to you, I've never seen the stuff that they they claim to it. be going on. I never seen it. I never never those aren't the type of parties that I I go to. I don't frequent those type of right. parties. And even if I go, like I said, I've never seen any of this. I'm like, when I hear about it, when did that happen? Yes. At what time did this go down? Because yes. I was there till 3.30. You mean 3.32? <laughs> so they waited for me to leave? Like, all right, good. That Wayne's <laughs> gone. Yeah. He talked too much. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. Never seen nothing. You know, I see you know? Yeah. Um, I don't be seeing, like, I'm not a, a man that's about the gangbangs and the this and that. Yeah. If I, if I party, I like my own party. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, even if I'm me and, you know, back in the day, it'd be me and some chicks. Yeah. It'd be me and some chicks. I don't need me some chicks and some nah, just, yeah. Yeah. This, this is my, my yeah. party. This is my swell. Sw Ain't swell no Amtrak right. going on. It's all love. Baby. This is a love session here. Like, yeah. go. But I don't, I, you know Amtrak's. Because that'll get you in trouble. Yeah. I see, I see the, the forest through the trees. I don't go to those parties like that. I've been to parties, but like I said, I never saw nothing. I'd be so surprised when I hear certain things. Like, that happened? Yeah. Where was I, I when that happened? Exactly. White chicks. Once the interview started getting heated and Shannon kept pressing him about these freak-off parties, Marlon got nervous and just started talking about his dad and Teslas and how he apparently don't drink and drive. I mean, you just cannot make this up. Because I got God in my life. Right. I got my daddy in my life. I got my mama. Uh-uh, yep. don't do that. Yep. You know, I don't have no blemishes on my NASCAR. 
I am brand clean. I don't go to jail. I don't do DUIs because I don't drink and drive. If I'm going to have me a drink, I don't care where I'm at. I'm going to call me an Uber. Right. I don't drink and drive. I don't get into silly, like, Beef things. Beef altercation, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't carry jewelry or nothing of value because I don't want to give you a reason to want to rob me. I got nothing. You want a credit card? Go for it, man. You got 20 minutes. Have, have at it. Right. Go rock out before I have to call in this. Someone stole my car. I don't invite, I don't drive fancy cars like Rolls Royces and no, 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 I got a Prius. No, I got, no, no, Prius, I ain't that cheap. Yeah. I, <laughs> I got one car, uh, uh, I, I got two cars. I got a 1994 Range Rover. 94? And it's still operational? Sure is, only 50,000 miles on it. 1994 Range Rover. Wow. And I have a Tesla that I'm about to drive over a cliff. Later in the interview, Shannon asked Marlon why he felt the need to wake up one day and dress like a white woman for a movie, even though there were a thousand of other stories he could have came up with. However, Marlon denied the allegations about him dressing up because the industry told him to. He said the only reason they made that movie is because he genuinely thought people would find it funny to see a fully grown black man cosplaying as a white woman. He said it had nothing to do with the industry, and it's a story that he and his brother came up with. So when you're shooting this movie, Obviously, you're getting laughed. Did you think it was going to do this? Yeah. We was like, it's special. Nobody's done it. it. I mean, you have to understand, that was the hardest movie Sean and I ever did. Yeah. To act in with two black men mm -hmm. playing two white girls. Right. We going, this is going to be. And I thought, when, when once again, my brother Sean's underrated. He came up with the idea for White Chicks. This man called me up 2 o'clock in the morning. I think this is high of green tea. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Marlon, we should play two white girls. I said, Sean, you need to live with green tea. <laughs> I'm taking my black ass to sleep. Next day he comes to the house. He's like, no, we got to do it. And I think it was Rick bought over FHM Magazine, or Sean bought over FHM Magazine. Mm -hmm. And on the cover was Nikki and Paris Hilton. And he was like, these are the girls that we got to play. And he said, I was watching this movie, Some Like It Hot. Boom. So we watched Some Like It Hot. <laughs> like The Matrix. He was like, That's it. I see it. Instead of criminals, we're going to play cops. Instead of two white guys playing two white girls, we're going to play two, two black men playing white girls. Instead of the little guy in the movie that's chasing around Jack uh, Lemon's character, we're going to make him one of them big ass. A basketball, football that love white girls who in their whole terminology, man, it's snowing in here. <laughs> who says it snows in April, man? You know, look, look at that big white one over there. That's the abominable snowman. There was a character me and my brother used to do all the time. So that's who we hired, Terry Crews. And you know, to this day, people like the stigma of you wearing a dress and yes. the white man that got you wearing a dress and nothing. No, man, you got it twisted. The white man got me wearing a dress. I didn't do this to try and get in Hollywood. This was something that we created because we said this would be funny. Right. Black people, black artists, stop minimalizing your creativity. We should do it all. Chow, I ain't even exaggerating when I say this, but not a single person believed a word coming out that man's mouth. People accused him of lying, and others flat out accused him of probably being Diddy's boy toy too at some point. One person said, bro stayed there. Man's deflected like an expert. Shay laughed because he knew bro was tweaking like his character in Requiem for a Dream. They were there. They saw just keeping their mouth shut, period. That's how it works, because not everyone partakes in the festival activities, but they sure saw. Remember, Kat said he went, saw someone and someone in a room, and was shocked. He called no names, but he saw. So they looked in the room too, but just won't say it, and that's okay, but don't pretend to be shocked. Another person said, everyone pretending they left before the parties got wild. Sure, buddy. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do y'all think about Marlon getting exposed? And do y'all think the allegations about him getting touched at Diddy these parties are true? Y'all been knew what to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.